All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the Washington Capitals, what happened last season, and where they're headed in the upcoming season now that the draft is over and free agency has begun. Washington's uh, season last, last season was injury plagued pretty much throughout the entire season. Um, I don't know how much that played into their, their final position. I, I, I think they potentially could have finished a little bit higher, but do I think this side would have made playoffs had they had a full strength side all season? That's, I mean, they were only 12 points off of a playoff spot, but I just, I just don't know. And that's my big question. Um, I know it was injury plagued and all the rest of it and stuff that we'll go through during the video, but even though it was injury plagued, are we going to see an improvement? They finished off the season with 35 wins and 80 points overall. Uh, it was disappointing to say the least uh, from a Washington perspective, especially a team that is aging and would be hoping to have, you know, a, a couple more seasons before they start there down the path of a of a lengthy rebuild um but yeah it just obviously the injuries didn't help and now the big question around that is given the injury plague this season is that going to be a continuing trend especially with an aging side um and also with that aging side can they can they make an improvement if they can stay healthy because you know, it, all their players are another year older, another year closer to that sort of retirement sort of thing. So, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Um, but I'll uh, kick on over to Jaden to take you guys through the you know projected lineups as per cap friendly. Yeah. So this is a team that's pretty much at the cap, running a basically just less than nine hundred thousand left in cap space. Uh, first line, obviously, Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, and Tom Wilson. Um, pretty expensive, old first line. Uh, you got Mantha, Strom, and Oshie on your second. Milano, Backstrom, and Protest on your, Protest on your third. Stively, uh, Dowd, and Kubel on your fourth. Defenders, Faravari uh, and Carlson rounding out your top pair. Sandine and Jensen. Joel Edmondson, they bring via trade for a third and um, Minnesota's third and the seventh of next year. Um, and Trevor Van Riemsdyk rounding out your bottom pair. Goalies, Darcy Kemper, uh, you know, obviously won that cup, but, you know, is he enjoying it now in <laughs> Capitals? We, like, we have to see how he goes this year. Uh, you got Charlie Lindgren um, as the backup there. Scratches, uh, Malenstein, McMichael, and Ale Alexeyev. Uh, you got Pacioretty they brought in through signing. He is still injured. We don't know when he'll be back uh, with that type of injury. It could be 6 to 12 months from when he injured it. So he could be back next year, um, or he might not even be back at all. We'll have to wait and see. On that $2 million, he also has $2 million in bonuses. So if he does play and hit those benchmarks, he does get paid a little bit more. And then I've added uh, Matthew Phillips there, just um, read it out, just someone they've brought in and signed. Uh, just minimum minimum wage, one year. He has a one-way contract. I don't know if he'll play or if um, he might, he'll probably start in the AHL and just stay there maybe most of the season. But if he does get caught up, he is on that one-way contract. So I think that's noteworthy. And then with this team, they've got no dead cap. That's quite interesting. So they're at the cap limit and yet they've got no dead cap. So just very expensive contracts on this team. Notable losses. Connor Brown um, only played like four games for Washington last year. Uh, Irwin, Sheary, Smith, and uh, Billen. Uh, they're going to Edmonton, Vancouver, Tampa, Dallas, and Ottawa. So not huge losses there in regards to their notable losses. So they don't get too much worse um, losing their assets. They do sign um, two of their young youngsters they've drafted um, last year and this year, and Crystal uh, just signed um, an entry-level contract, and Mirosh, I cannot say that name, Mirosh Nikniaglov <laughs> um, also signed an entry-level contract. I'll just call him Ivan. <laughs> um, yeah, so 
they, they've signed some of their um, draft picks into entry level contracts, which is good sights to see for their future. Um, considering the future is going to look pretty bleak on this team, but uh, yeah, I'll pass it over to you to just have a little talk through them. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's you know, as I touched on in the in the intro, uh, like where to next for this team? I think we all we all know that the big thing on their mind right now is Alex Ovechkin breaking Gretzky's record. It's looking pretty likely, you know, touch wood, no injuries or anything like that. Um, if he can stay healthy for the remainder of his contract, he'll, he'll run that, run that record down. Um, but the question is, is what do you sacrifice for him to do that? I know, obviously, he's been a fantastic server of this uh, franchise for a very long time. Uh, he's, you know, obviously been a big part of Washington getting their first cup. Um, but do you risk delaying your rebuild by three years? Because in my opinion, I don't see Washington back in the playoffs next season. I don't even if Backstrom's healthy and the rest of their team stays healthy, um, I don't see this side making the playoffs. Not with the strength of the East currently. It's you know, you look at the teams like your top three for the for the Metro, who they're competing with right now. You're gonna have Carolina, New Jersey, New York Rangers. And I don't see them knocking out any one of them. But then I look at the, the wild card race and you've got, you know, Columbus Blue Jackets had a terrible season just gone, but they should be a lot better. Pittsburgh have, to- have you know, come out and basically said they're going to continue to sort of try and, and go for that cup, uh, especially with some of the moves they've made. They've made that pretty obvious. Uh, and, I, and I feel like that side's stronger than this Washington side. You've got the likes of the New York Islanders as well. I think that's a team that they could potentially catch, but all of a sudden you're looking, that's that's the sixth place team. So I'm looking at these guys and thinking that they're going to struggle to finish any higher than sixth in the Metro. So how are they going to make the playoffs? And then you, you know, you're talking a wild card spot. You don't just have the fourth, fifth team in the Metro to compete with. You've also got the fourth and fifth team in the Atlantic. And that Atlantic's still going to be relatively strong. Boston, could they, you know, are they going to still be around the mark? Could they fall off? But I still think Boston's stronger than this Washington side. So, yeah, I just, I don't see them being anywhere around the mark for the remainder of Alex Ovechkin's contract. So what do you do? Because I get it. They want to, they want Alex Ovechkin to break that record as a capital. But does there have to be a conversation that takes place that says, okay, Ovi, we're with you. We want you to do it here, but we also want you to, while doing it, assist us in a rebuild. Mm. It might not be a full-fledged rebuild where you rip the whole side apart. You still leave enough players that are going to be able to assist him in scoring 30 goals a year for the next two, three years. But think there's got to be there's just got to be that conversation it can't just all be about Ovi breaking the record because if it is unless he does it in the next season and a half you you're potentially wasting three years and yeah it's going to be a fantastic feat when he breaks it if if he breaks it I should say um but if the capitals have sacrificed three seasons You've got to sort of, I don't know, it'd almost be bittersweet. It's like, awesome, he's broken the record. Now we have to spend, we've just spent three years not making the playoffs. He's broke his record, which is great, but now we're going to have to spend the next five seasons not making the playoffs whilst we rebuild. And all of a sudden you go from you go from being one of the best teams in the, in the East and winning a cup and all the rest of it to spending nine seasons outside of the playoffs. It's so, a, another yeah. interesting thing I just thought of though is just how much money is that um, 
that uh, little stat worthy. You know what I mean? Like, if they're going to mortgage three seasons and they're at the cap here, you know, 82 mil, 84 mil, you know, that like, over like three years, you know, you're looking at like 240 million just for that stat um, because you, you're not competing for the cup. So you kind of, it's a very expensive stat when you really, really, really think about it. Um, and I don't know if it's really, truly worthy uh, to go for it. Like, look, I, I would love to see a Vetchkin break it. Um, you know, someone in our era uh, that I've grown up watching and whatnot, uh, break a stat like that would be amazing. But there's a part of me, just a small part of me, that hopes he doesn't break it, just purely for the fact that he signed for 9.5 mil. Um, like, you, you're a guy that's basically in it just for the stat at this point, and you signed for 9.5 mil. Uh, you should have been signing for, like, 5 mil, allow your team to get more caps, so then they can put better players around you, so you can score more goals. That's how I thought about it, um, because he, he was already paid for years. So, there's a little piece of me that just, like, has a little less sympathy if he doesn't break the, um, the benchmark. I've, I've just got to say it, but it's only a small, small piece um, you know, obviously with these caps that they've got, they've got a lot of moves that they're going to make. I think Kuznetsov's on the block. Um, you know, Tom Wilson's a UFA this year. I, I think they want to keep him and I'd, I'd probably want to keep him, but you know, he's probably on the block. I, I'd probably say I want to keep him, but you'd probably want to trade him for draft picks, right? Well, it depends, right? Like what, what's his... What's his want? That, that's a conversation you've got to have with him. Yeah, yeah. You go, all right, Tom, we want to keep you. We love you here. The fans love you here, all the rest of that. Um, do you want to be a part of the rebuild? Do you want to be a part of this team going forward? Um, yeah. Well, I wouldn't be. Then... Because you'd want to be paid your worth, right? Because Ovechkin didn't take yeah. a cut. So you, there's no I'll take a team-friendly deal type of conversation because your big players haven't. And I'm not saying that it has to be that kind of a conversation. I'm just saying that they've got to have a conversation to whether or not he wants to re-sign because oh, yeah. it's not it's not worth like if he's going to re-sign, they have to do it now or they have to do it before the deadline because it's not worth losing someone like Tom Wilson for free. They're not going to be in the playoff hunt. I doubt it. I'd be very surprised and if they are. But if Wilson goes for free, like Wilson, Wilson's a top line player. Like. He, he might be a, a, a grub, as everyone says, but he's got some real talent about him as well. He's not just a, I'm going to do a drive-by for Ryan Reeves. I'm sorry about that. But he's not a Ryan Reeves where he's just, he's there for his, his, his ability to fight and put on a hit and, and bully people. He's there for that, but he can also do everything else. So he's worth an absolute packet, especially to a playoff contending team. Mm. Like they're going to want him. So the return you could get for Tom Wilson, to me, you've got to consider it if he's not, if he's umming and ahhing about signing. If you're really wanting to keep him and he's willing to, to sign on and all the rest of that, you have the conversation, you sign him before the deadline. But if not, that is a packet that, that I reckon they can move and they could get the most for out of probably anyone else on this team. So, yeah. I mean, they've got Mantha to move as well, who will probably go by deadline. But Tom Wilson's the big one that could, could get you a really juicy return. But are they looking at returns and going, no, we just want the best player to play alongside of Etchkin just to get the stat, you know? You don't have to think of what's the mentality of the, um, like, McClellan there and, you know, the whole entire you know, board members and whatnot. Um, are they just ready to forfeit those type of assets just for those stats for Ovechkin? Um yeah, I, but I Wilson's be also a player. Wilson's also a player that I wouldn't w mind having around for a rebuild because I think his mentality and his leadership in the locker room is something that you want. Mm. It's something that you want and you want to instill in your youngsters coming up. So I'm not against them signing him on long term and basically making him a cap for life. He is twenty. He's twenty nine. So yeah, like. The question is, how long of a talking? contract do, are you talking here? That's that's that, that's that, where that. it comes down to cap cap space and what he wants and all mm -hmm. the rest of that. But you know, if if he was on a similar deal to what he is now for seven eight years, that's not a terrible deal for someone like Tom Wilson. Um, given that you're going to, especially if you chase after Alex Ovechkin, don't start your rebuild for three years. You're going to be 
a couple of years into that contract anyway, and five million dollars with the cap increasing, it's not it's not hard to bury if he falls away to the later stages of his career. But yeah, I just think he's one of those players if you were gonna sign. I don't think it would just be a signing to play along Alex Ovechkin. I think it would be a signing to help with your rebuild and help be that leadership for those young up and coming players. Well, the problem with them is that, that like they're big contracts, you know, you got Nicholas Bo- um, Backstrom here, 9.2 mil projected on third line, like 9.2 mil on your third line. These are old players getting, getting worse generally. Um, as you get older, Dylan Strain, 5 mil, Kuznetsov, obviously 7.8, like they're big contracts. They're declining. Um, it's not going to age well, so you do have to move some. We have talked about, you know, Mantha and Wilson, and I reckon Kuznetsov is one of the pieces they could, um, they have been trying to move. But you've also got to look at, uh, like, it's just an interesting stat. They've got seven forwards over five million dollars. So no matter what, you have a five million or more player on your third line, and that's just an overpayment, no matter what. So no matter what, there is at least one bad contract on here. Um. On the on this team, and that, that you look at their defense, and there's what one huge contract in Carlson, and that's it. Uh, you got a four million, three million, two point six, um, and a couple, one and a half. So there's so much money going into this forward line, and not enough to this defense that I feel like you could flip a Wilson or a Kuznetsov or whatever you flip, and turn that into something like a Matt Dumba. Like you know, you bring in. That defender, um, you know, because you are apparently going for it for the next so many years because of Ovechkin, because you're sitting in this limbo, like, we're not really going for it, but we're going for it, but we're rebuilding, but we're not rebuilding. And look, they've done good in regards to their draft picks, um, getting two two of the recent ones to entry-level contracts, but it's going to take a lot more to rebuild this team. And yeah, I just... I think they need to flip a couple of those, bring in someone like a Matt Dumba or a, a nice first line defender, shore up that defense because I don't think Kemper's your, you know, your star goalie that's going to just shut out no matter what. He's not going to do Shostak and things or just stand on his head all the time. I I thought he was pretty much carried by the Avs um, for the cup. He, he he wasn't a he wasn't a he wasn't a goaltender that that won his team yeah it, the it, cup. yeah you didn't go he, it was because of a, him. Yeah. yeah, you look at this year and look at what Florida. Absolutely. Yeah, Florida's goalies did um, just standing on his head, you know, Hill standing on his head. Um, yeah, just Kempo was never that guy. So you do also have five point two five signed in Kemper there, and I feel like you could probably get um, something better for the same price, um, or you just trade down, save some cap space on your goalie, and go more into your defense because I think that is the problem with this team right now is uh, they need that another first line or second line uh, defender and used that from uh, the forward line space. You know, you do have Max Pacioretty coming in, who's going to be that cheap forward possibly, but that's the risk. That's a risk signing one year. You don't even know what's going to happen with that. And I don't see what else is going to come step up. With that. He's, he's, he's been injury plagued for so long and, you know, Carolina pick him up last year with the intentions of, yep, okay, well, last season, with the intentions of him being, like, probably that bottom six sort of centre. If he can find his old form, he might move up on that um, that that list. But he, he he looked really good when he played those, you know, for, for that little bit. And then, bang, done again. Long-term injury list again. And... Yeah, for that $2 million, one of the things you uh, touched on before we started this video was the Philip Zadina mm, situation. I was going to bring that up, like, yep. You, you have $2 million in Max Pacioretty, which, yeah, okay, it can go on long-term injury reserve until he's back, and then you bring him back. It's only $2 million. It's not the worst. But given Max Pacioretty's situation, like he is a superstar. He has been a great player of his career. But it's a real risk for a team that supposedly wants to try and get back into a, a you know cup contending situation. Whereas in a Philip Sedina signed for one point one with San Jose Sharks, mm. I I just you made the thing of did they even go for him? Because he's a twenty three year old who you could probably stick on your third line 
you can move someone like a, um, you know, whether it's it's moving Mantha before the season starts or or whether it's moving a Kuznetskov, like you said, and, you know, Strome moves up, Action moves up, and, and Zadina becomes that third line center. I just, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I think Zadina's a winger, but yeah. Oh, he's a winger? Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think I. Yeah. No, but, but that's yeah, all right. Like, like, probably. like. You got what Kubel on the right. You got Protest on the right. You got Snively on the left. Milano on the left. I reckon you, mm. if you do trade out a Mantha or something, this this guy could have easily stepped in. Oh, I just think you take this risk on Pacioretty. I think it's a, a worthy risk in the sense if he comes back early, you're gonna do good things halfway, like for half a season. Um, most likely, obviously, it's a bad injury. You see how players come back from it. Um, but I just feel like it was a. Like, if you're going to take the risk on Pacioretty, I, I don't understand why you don't take the risk on Zadina. I get it, like 900000 left, but it's not hard to move, you know, $1 million, um, you know, either... He's a 23-year-old kid. And he's a 23-year-old kid. It matches hungry. a rebuild. It, you can re- revamp the player's career. He's hungry, he like, hungry. He, like he said. And I, I just think um, it's they've missed a great opportunity on getting Zadina there. And it's a guy I, who turned down free money. Who yeah. turned down free money basically yes, just to turn around and say, No, I'm an NHL player, I'm not playing down in the AHL, I'm not just gonna or get bought out. I want to prove that I've got what it takes. Someone sign me to a contract so I can come in and show what I've got. And yeah, I yeah, I agree I agree with you. I think that's a massively missed opportunity by yeah. these guys. I, th- I think it would have fit well because then, you know, if he does pan out, you've got a 23, 24-year-old going into um, your future. He'll be hitting his, like, prime if he did pan out and, like, 27 or whatnot um, in your rebuild. So um, matching the timelines of Crystal and uh, Mira Shnishchenko. Sh- 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mira Shnishchenko. But, um... Good old Ivan. <laughs> God damn it, man. Um, yeah, so it's. Uh, I, I think that was probably the biggest miss of their um, off season so far. Obviously, they've. Um, I I think there's been loose links to Dumba. Obviously, they'd have to move a contract of substantial um, from their forward line, um, which I think is very doable with the Tom Wilson Mathis situation. So, you, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like they're at a point where they've possibly mortgaged the next 10 years just purely because of Vetchkin. I think, you know, you're mortgaging probably 10 years. Like, I'm just saying 10 years because it's going to take a while to rebuild. I know you've got these two signings, but they have to pan out as well. Um, and, yeah, like, he didn't he didn't take a, a team-friendly deal for it either. Uh, so I just don't know if this is the right move. I love a Vetchkin. I just wouldn't mortgage my whole entire 10 years uh, for one guy's stat. And, and he got you one cup. I like, he's been a great, he's a franchise player, but he got, he brought you one cup, you know, like well, what do you do for Sidney Crosby then? Like how much of a future do you mortgage, mortgage 30 years? Is, is one cup 10 years? Like what, what's the, what's the time? Yeah. Like? <laughs> well, yeah I, just, I, I don't know. Like I feel like Alex Ovechkin probably backs from as well. We're a little bit greedy in their contracts. I know they've both been fantastic players. They both brought, you know, the cup to Washington. Um, but, yeah, like, for me, I feel like players, especially in that twilight, you're trying to, I get it, you're trying to maximise your earnings before you f- eventually leave hockey, but, my how God, much, How much do you need? Sh- how much do you I, need? I know. You've made so much money over your career, it's not funny. It's not like you were a one million a year player for your entire career, and then someone handed you a $5 million contract at the end. His estimated went, oh. career earnings is $138 million. Yeah. Plus, how much not, How much do you need? <laughs> but that's not endorsements either. And like, that's, yeah, exactly. That's like, they make so much money off endorsements, it's not funny. So. Exactly. So, I, you know, you, you got to look at this and go, hey, Backstrom, you know, couldn't you have taken a 6 mil or 7 mil deal? Ovechkin, why couldn't you have taken a 6 mil, 7 mil deal? All of a sudden, that frees up, you know, five to six million dollars in cap space and you know we could be talking about you know matt you just said matt dumba that pays for him 
boom, yeah. doing business uh, in that lineup. If they took the, if if anyway. they took those cap hits, I reckon they would be uh, on playoff easy, um, cup contender every year. If they took those cap hits, because no matter what, I feel like or at least Avechkin is outplaying that contract, and um, yeah, that, then you don't have to worry about this rebuild and whatnot because of what they would be doing. But yeah, it is what it is. I. I don't like the way that it went about it. I don't like the way they've gone about it so far. I don't think the addition of Edmondson is um, much to talk about. It you know they got him for 50% retained yeah. for yeah. a third and a seventh. Like that's your your, your sixth line. Um, the sixth line. Your your third line. Uh, it's probably sixth man D. Uh, right there, and then they brought in Pacioretty, who probably won't play at least half the season. And Phillips, who is probably won't even play, uh, but if he does get called up, you know, he have to get waived if he goes back down. So, didn't bring in the additions so far, anyway. Um, you know, trades can still happen, obviously, and whatnot. But so far, I haven't liked their off season. I haven't liked what they've done past seasons. The only things I'm really happy about is the Crystal and um, Ivan signings, and that's about it for me. Yeah, they don't get better for me. And that's why, I mean, like, even if they're healthy this season compared to last, I don't see it going any different than the way last season yeah. went. I, I, I don't see them bouncing back. I don't see them getting back into the playoffs. And it's only going to go downhill from there. Like, I don't I don't think they'll miss playoffs this year and then they'll bounce back next year. No, mm. I think this is the downward spiral from yeah. now. Ovechkin's going to hopefully get to that record. But, again, at what cost? And yeah. it looks like it's going to be a, you know, two to three year delay on, on a Washington rebuild. I hope I hope that's wrong. And for Washington fans, I hope that's wrong. And I hope they have conversations and they, they go down the rebuild path and they try to meet in the middle where they get Ovechkin to that, to that um, record, but they don't mortgage their future. So... Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, but yeah, it's. Uh, it's I'm not optimistic. Like, I'm I'm yeah. I'm optimistic for Vetchkin to break the record. I think it's highly doable, but that's about it. I think the next at least five years is looking pretty dismal for a Capitals fan. Um, I think you got a Vetchkin to blame a lot for that, and Backstrom, uh, and the GM that signed those contracts, and. You know, I know they've done a lot for you over the career, but at what point does someone, you know, do their tenure, <laughs> in a sense? So, it, it hurts. I hope it, it is a quicker turnaround um, than what I think, because I think it could be a 10-year rebuild if they handle this the wrong way. And, like, a 10-year till they're relevant again anyway, sorry. But, yeah, I, I hope, hope for the best. I don't see them making the playoffs this year. Uh, I can see him probably at the, um, playing that wild card spot, but I think this team's old, has been injury plagued, injuries were rife for this um, team. I don't think they brought in the depth to fix that issue, and I feel like no matter what, later in the season they'll uh, fall off because of injuries. Yeah, 100%. Alrighty. Can't argue that. All right, leave a like to the video. Comment below on what you think of the Washington Capitals situation. Do you want to see OV break the record or not? where him and Backstrom are a bit greedy with their contracts and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn notifications on and then we'll see you guys for the next video catch you guys bye guys